Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Minister Paul, January 25th, 2014. Going to do a seven-minute service. Um, hitting the timer now. Okay, I got this message from the Holy Spirit as I was sitting here in praise and worship after doing a Bible study. Now, I want to talk about the difference between correction and condemnation. I even wrote it down when the Holy Spirit gave it to me. Correction or condemnation, pride or boldness. And that's going to be the title of this video. Let's go right into it. And I'm going to start off with an example of something that happened in my life. And then we're going to go to some scriptures. Uh, the very first position I received working in the church uh, was usher. Usher um, are the ones that meet and greet and seat but they also you know take up the offering um they go around and hand out bulletins you know it's a very kind of in your face thing you know when the pastor says you know ushers come forward it's like every eye in the church is on you and i, I want the world to know that i wasn't always bold uh for the Lord, I, I was actually, you know, you, you're going to find this hard to believe, but I was shy in the church. You know, I used to sit in the back. Um, and, and when I'd usher, I felt like every eye in the whole church was staring at me, even when I was behind them and they were facing forward. Um, and but, you know, the Lord Jesus gave me a boldness that I can't explain. And I want to share that with you and hopefully impart some wisdom into you so you too also can be bold. There was a woman named Sister Patty. She was on uh, what they call the hospitality team. They, they sent out like cookies and stuff to new members and greeting and that. It's called the hospitality team. Um, she came over to me one day when I'd been ushering about a month. And she said, I, I, she said, you know, I have a word from you from the Lord. And if people don't believe in words from the Lord, um, you're serving a dead God because he's alive. He's forgiven and heaven's gates are open wide for him to pour out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. You're, you're not reading the word right if you're serving a dead God. First Corinthians 12 clearly mentions all these gifts he bestowed upon us in love and he's the same yesterday today and forever so if the gifts were then they're now nowhere in the bible does it say the gifts stop it says uh you know prophecy shall cease but then they take that out of context when jesus comes back when that which is perfect is come we serve god a living god with power and boldness so anyway sister uh patty she comes over to me uh, it's not Sandy, it's Patty. She comes over to me because we would have leadership meetings, you know, once a month. So I'm in the back. I'm on the left-hand side. There was left, right, and center. It was a small church of about 150 people. And she said, you know, I have a word from you because my head was always kind of down. And ushers are supposed to always be looking up at the pastor, you know, for, for cues and signals and stuff. He may want you to come forward. You know, someone may try to tackle him or something. Uh, so, you know, having your head down in the sand is not being a good usher. And smiling, you know, when the people come in, they want to see smiles, not frowns. So, um, let me check my time and speed up. <laughs> uh, three minutes and 33 seconds left. So, she came over to me and she says, I, she touched me on the sh shoulder and nobody was looking. You know, we're in the back of the church. She said, you know, the, the, the Lord gave me a word for you, a word of knowledge. And that's listed in 1 Corinthians 12. She said, God wants you to be bold. It's inside you to be bold. Stop acting so timid and let his boldness fall upon you. She said, the righteous are bold like a lion. See, she used scripture. She used the word. And for the rest of that service and for the rest of my uh, term of ushering because then later I went on to security and then from security uh, to another title and then ultimately to minister um, over a period of years of course 
for the rest of that time of ushering, this boldness came upon me that I can't explain. And God used her and put her in my path and used the word. And I had never been more bolder in my life. I would march down that aisle looking everybody in the face with the biggest smile on my face. And, and uh, so that's how I know that did she come and condemn me or did she correct me? Because she saw me always looking at my feet when I should have been looking at the pastor she observed something and she prayed and the Lord gave her a word for me. So that was correction. So so I see a lot in Romans 1, it says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Well, let me tell you something here. Um, condemn, condemnation uh, puts you down. It makes you feel bad. Um, it makes you feel unworthy. Um, correction will edify you, encourage you, exhort you, and make you feel good. God wants you to feel good. You know that? He wants you to be encouraged. And so so there's a, so what she did was correct me. The Lord, the, the Lord says, whom he loves, he also corrects, not whom he condemns. And there's too many people on YouTube condemning people and making them feel bad when God wants them to feel good. But I'm here to tell you that God will send somebody into your life boldly. And so let's talk about boldness. You know, Jesus Christ, he did say in Psalms, it, it, it's recorded, it says, Psalms 18, it says, The wicked flee when no one pursue them, but the righteous are bold like a lion. So who, what lion are they referring to? The lion of the tribe of Judah. The, in, in, you know, so we are to, the Bible says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. He says, you know, if you're going to get into a battle as a soldier of the cross, you are to be bold. And so many people will accuse you of pride and they're in error because, again, that's an accusation. And so we have to keep in mind what we say to other uh, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen. Because pride makes you feel bad. Pride is not from God because you're bold in the Lord. And you are operating in his power because Jesus Christ said you will receive power. That does not make you prideful. And I wish YouTube would get it right. I wish I had longer than seven minutes to give this message. Uh, my seven minutes is up. Uh, so I'm going to end. But uh, I'm going to put a link to a whole bunch of scriptures in here. And I'm going to stay true to the seven minutes. I want you to know. Uh, 2 Timothy 4, 3 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Titus 1, 9 says, Hold fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Titus 2, 1 says, But thou, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. 2 Timothy 2, uh, 4, verse 2 through 4 says, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering or patience, and what? Doctrine, the word of God. For the time will come, and, and then it says, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Let me tell you a fable on YouTube. That when you're bold in the Lord, out doing his will and speaking boldly because you know who you are in Christ Jesus and the power of Holy Ghost comes upon you and you begin to raise your voice a little louder and believe who you are in Christ Jesus and believe and receive that you're a child of God filled with his Holy Spirit and you begin to speak that forth and someone accuses you of pride. You need to correct them and say, how is that pride when I'm just being who God called me to be? What you are doing is condemning me and I refuse it. I report to God, not man. So, no, this isn't pride and I'm going to correct you. I'm not condemning you. I think that you should learn the word more so you can understand the difference between uh, pride and correction. Man, I went nine minutes. I'm going to read more scriptures then. Um because I got these scriptures up. I can't stop. So I'm just on something has hit me tonight. I call it being on a heater. Second Timothy 1 13. Hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. You know, when, when you get full of faith, you know, 
a boldness is going to come upon you. The opposite of boldness is timidity. Um, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I get on here and scream this and someone will uh, accuse me of being in, in pride. Well, I'm here to tell you the devil slipped a message into their ear and got boldness confused with pride. The devil would love for us all to be silent and to be timid and be afraid. But God said, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power. Hear me now. Power. Whose power? My power? No. His power. I am operating in the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The same power that rose him off the cross. And he told me to go out and be bold like a lion. Do you hear me? So therefore don't come at me sideways with bad leaven and false doctrine accusing me of operating in pride or anybody on YouTube for that matter and put a condemnation on there because nothing can separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus my Lord according to Romans 8 I am more than a conqueror a, a conqueror through him that gives me strength and we overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and we love not our lives unto death that's Revelation 12 11 uh, Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brethren, that's brothers and sisters in the Lord, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. You see, there's too many people on YouTube condemning people and telling them they're full of pride. And I want to tell you, look, Listen in to some of my Bible studies and learn the Bible. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, study to show thyself approved unto God. Unto God, not man, okay? A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So when somebody comes sideways at you and, and puts you down in condemnation or judges you according to the law, when we're under mercy and grace, for example, my tattoos, it's brought up daily. You know what? I'm forgiven of the tattoos, but that was a Levitical law. Ask them if they go to Jerusalem every year to, uh, to give the high priest an offering because the high priest is Jesus Christ and if they go to anybody but Jesus Christ then they are uh, breaking uh, God's commandment of idolatry and see what they want what the devil wants to do because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood and I pray for all these people that have made videos about me because can't nobody hold me down can't nobody stop me from putting out the truth 1 Corinthians 11, 1 and 2, and I know I'm way over the times. So I, I got to get this out. It says, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances I, as I delivered them unto you. Do you think Christ wants you walking around with your head down and in your sand? No, he says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The path implying that you're to go out in boldness and speak boldly the word of God. Jude 1 3 says beloved when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation it was needful for me to write unto you because you people needed to hear this in other words and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints see contending for the faith faith takes a boldness and you know what's going to happen is you're going to come under persecution you're going to come under accusations that you're acting out in pride but these people are not hearing from God and we need to pray for them today father God we pray for them in the name of Jesus Titus 3 5 says not by works of righteousness what we have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost so if you're still a timid person condemning others and accusing them of pride you have not put on the mind of Christ you're hearing from deceiving spirits Second to less, Second Thessalonians 3, 6 says, Now we command you. This is a commandment in the word of God. Brethren, that's brothers and sisters in Christ. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, he gives this commandment. Yeshua HaMashiach. He says that you would draw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us, which is what? Mercy and grace and not the law. The law leads to damnation. Mercy and grace leads to the mercy seat of Christ. You can boldly go there. It's not boasting to say so. 
Uh, Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship. Is God timid? Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, right? Which God hath before ordained, we shall walk in them. I'm here to tell you according to 2 Corinthians 11.3, But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through subtlety, in other words, lied to her, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity is that is in Christ. In other words, all you got to do is follow Christ and his word and stop listening to people that are absurd because they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And you know what? That's an abundant life full of boldness, full of power, full of the Holy Ghost. One more. Thy word, Psalms 119.11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against me. Uh, James 1 and 2, Blessed is the man that endureth, I'm sorry, James 1.12, Blessed is the man or woman that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love them. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Was Jesus timid? Would you accuse Jesus of being bold? Would you uh, condemn Jesus? Well, all we're doing is acting like Christ called us to act. 1 Timothy 6, 20 said, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and opposition of science falsely so-called. Uh, 1 Timothy 4, 16 says, Take hate unto thyself. In other words, why are you so worried about putting your mouth on me when you got you should be concerned about your own salvation with fear and trembling? And unto what? The doctrine. Do you understand the word of God? YouTube is getting away from the word of God. It ain't going to happen on my watch. It's 7.33 p.m. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear me. So if you will hear me today, if you will hear Minister Paul today, God is calling you to boldness. In closing, 1 Timothy 4, 1 and verse 2 says, Now the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, that gives you the boldness, speaketh expressly that in the latter times, that's today, some shall depart from the faith. And look what they're doing. They're giving heed to seducing spirits. They're hearing lies whispered in their eyes and they're believing them. They're giving heed to them. And doctrines of devils, they're speaking lies and hypocrisy. You know why it says having their conscience seared with the hot, hot iron. Now, quote these scriptures often. And remember, you're not operating in pride when you speak boldly of the doctrine of the word of God. You're not condemning someone when you encourage them and correct them. YouTube needs to stop this false doctrine. And I've been called today. I was given the message. I was even given the title. Correction or condemnation. Pride or boldness. And everything I've given you is in the word of God. I ask you. Are you timid or bold? Because YouTube is not your judge. I'm not your judge. Jesus Christ is the righteous judge. And you know what he said? He said to go out and sit at the table in the presence of your enemies. Does that sound like a coward to you? Is that saying you're prideful? No. I'm sorry. I had to put this out today. Uh, and I don't even know uh, if I'm... <laughs> I, I, I just feel like preaching all night, but I got to get ready for my sermon for home church tomorrow. I pray somehow, not only that, you know, people just hear this as a video and go on to the next, but you apply the word of God to your life. You will let this word, uh, you know, enrich you, encourage you. God wants you to be bold. You know, go out on the, tell people about Jesus 
you know, and they're going to think that, oh, are you better than me or something? You say, no, I'm a bold soldier of the cross. I picked up my cross and I'm following the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Rose of Sharon. He forever saved me and I want you to come with me. Don't condemn me. Encourage me to go out and do what's right because there's too much wrong in the world. And when you sign into YouTube, say something that encourages somebody. Let me tell you. There is, in the year 2014, miracle signs and wonders stored up for everybody within the sound of my voice. It's up to you to believe that and receive that by faith. I can tell you that. Pastor Patrick could tell you that. Uh, there's so many people that come to mind that could tell you that or they could pray for you on that. But it's up to you to receive it. Just like when Patty came up to me and said, look, I have a word from you from God. He wants you to be bold like a lion of the tribe of Judah. Now it was up to me to either believe that or reject it. To think she was condemning me or to believe that she was encouraging me. For me to go out and be bold or let the devil accuse me of being in pride. See, I had to make a choice that day, and I'm asking you to make the same choice and to stand up for the Word of God. Because people are perverting the Word of God all over YouTube, and it's not going to happen on my watch. I will get on here every day with the Word of God if I speak for two hours, if only ten people will listen. You know why? Because one sends a thousand to flight, and two sends ten thousand to flight. So what do you think ten people full of the Boldness and dunamis power of the Holy Ghost could do to YouTube if we would come into one accord and boldly proclaim the Word of God as all truth. We could change the world, saints, and that's what God wants. In Acts 4, 5,000 people were saved. We got 7 billion people in this world. How many times have you seen 5,000 people saved at your church? You know why? Because the church is dead because they refuse the power and they're, they're putting out condemnation instead of correction. They're accusing people of operating in pride instead of encouraging them to be bold. They're teaching motivational speeches instead of the true, unadulterated, infallible word of God. Shalom.